Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, March 4th. Have you heard the name Yusaku Mazawa before? No. We had not well, till today. Till this morning. <laughs> right. He's an eccentric Japanese billionaire. Again, his name is Yusaku Mazawa, and he has a deal for you. Yeah, he's looking for volunteers to go to the moon. That's right. On first ever private commercial space trip, the week-long journey named Dear Moon, set for 2023 aboard Elon Musk's SpaceX Starship and Super Heavy Rocket. And although the next generation Starship is still in testing, some runs ending in fiery crashes. Musk has assured it will be ready to embark two years and has said he believes the mission will make a real difference. All right, so here's uh, if you're going to do it, uh, and again, there's eight slots, I think. It will take three days to get to the lunar planet. The Starship will loop behind it, then start its three-day trek back home, making it the farthest distance any human has ever traveled from Earth. So in a video posted at Tuesday, the Zozo founder explained that the full passenger list will include a 10 to 12 crew members. Now, the 45-year-old will bankroll the expedition, though how it remains unclear. He originally specified that applicants must be artists, and then he's like, I'm really looking for a girlfriend, too. So he got flooded <laughs> with applications for that. And then they just, they're like, that's not cool, man. So he had to drop that whole right. thing. Now a uh, wider, diverse audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So each chosen participant will wear a custom tailored SpaceX suit that is made to provide a pressurized environment for all members. All right. So if you'd like to be a part of this, pre-applications for the selection process are due by March 4th. 6.59 p.m. Pacific time and initial screening but will be begin a week later. Final interviews and medical checks are scheduled for late May. And there you can see the website, dearmoon.earth. Yeah, not me. No, no. I'm going to do it. You No. Seriously. No way. Dare me? I, <laughs> yes, I do. I dare you. Done. Double oh, dog dare me. Okay. okay. All right. Well, he's doing it now. Done. Let's take a look at today's 9 at 9. Lawmakers in Washington, D.C. are bracing for potential violence. House leaders canceled today's legislative session and rescheduled votes after federal investigators warned of a possible plot by extremist militia groups to again storm the Capitol. The ERCOT board of directors says CEO and President Bill Magnus will be removed from his position in 60 days. The board is expected to immediately begin the search for his replacement. The Senate's consideration of the nearly $2 trillion COVID-19 relief bill was pushed back a day and will begin today. Republicans appear ready to slow down the vote. Senator Ron Johnson has said he'll force the bill to be read aloud by Senate clerks, which could take about 10 hours. House Democrats have approved a voting rights bill that would restrict partisan gerrymandering, strike down hurdles to voting, and bring transparency to the campaign finance system. House Democrats also voted to pass a policing bill named after George Floyd. It bans chokeholds and qualified immunity for law enforcement, while easing requirements for prosecutors to pursue misconduct charges. Internal Border Patrol documents show unaccompanied minors detained on the U.S.-Mexico border are often held in custody longer than the law allows. They show the average custody time is 77 hours, five hours longer than the legal limit. Prince Philip had a successful heart procedure in a London hospital yesterday. According to Buckingham Palace, the procedure was for a pre-existing heart condition. Texas Department of State Health Services has announced teachers and child care staff are now eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. The Texas Education Agency says vaccination decisions should be left up to the individual and that school districts cannot mandate that employees get vaccinated. SpaceX has launched its 20th mission for the Starlink Internet Constellation. It's an effort to create a new option for high-speed Internet access anywhere in the world. And that's today's 9 at 9. All right, I'm going to do it. DearMoon.Earth. Okay. I just want to be clear. I don't want to be Mr. Maizawa's girlfriend. Well, of course. I didn't think that for one second. Okay, good. good. What, Kevin? What's so funny? <laughs> Katie Blake's in for Justin Horn today. Hi, Katie. Good morning, everybody. Wish uh, me luck. 
Good, <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be rooting for you. Uh, still cool outside this morning, but not quite as chilly as it's been the past couple of days. We have some added humidity uh, in place this morning. Uh, 55 now at the airport. Calm winds. Our sensor there are still reading cloudy skies, but as you can see on the live cam shot behind me, uh, we've got plenty of sunshine getting through. And while there will be some high clouds around at times today, still plenty of sun, and it'll end up being a very warm day. Today's pollen count. Mold is up a bit from where it was yesterday. It was low yesterday. Today it's moderate with a count of 690. So that may be giving you a little trouble on this Thursday. Mountain Cedar and Elm are both low. After school today, temperatures jumping back into the 70s. A lot of us will be in the mid to upper 70s this afternoon. Breezy winds out of the south southeast around 10 to 15 miles per hour. Our next front arrives tomorrow and it'll shake up our forecast a bit as we head into the weekend. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a bit, guys. All right, thank you, Katie. Uh, by the way, I've begun the application process and I do have to upload a photo. <laughs> so there's our first catch. Uh, 410 <laughs> yes. right now at Starcrest. Traffic looks great. It's a beautiful day out there. We'll keep an eye on the roads for you during this hour of GMSA. Top stories we are following today. A human smuggling investigation right here in San Antonio. Bear County Sheriff's Office says they have detained three people in connection to that case. BCSO said it all started around 11 last night when a deputy tried to pull over an SUV for speeding. This was in the 2200 block of South Callahan, not far from Highway 90 on the west side. Deputies tell us 10 people, including the driver, jumped out of the SUV and ran away. Three people were caught, but deputies were not able to find the other seven. Homeland Security investigations now taking over that case. Well, after Governor Greg Abbott announced that he will put an end to the state's mask mandate next week, there have been many questions about where you'll still be required to wear a mask and where you won't. The San Antonio International Airport reminding travelers the facility will keep the mask mandate in place. The announcement was shared on the airport's Facebook page explaining the mask mandate falls under federal requirements at airports and on airplanes. Masks are also still required when traveling with VIA. The company said on Facebook passengers have to wear face coverings on their vehicles and at their facilities. It's also because of the federal requirement. The only passengers exempt those under the age of two. Many San Antonio businesses are also keeping their mask requirements in place, not because they have to, but because they are choosing to. Right now on KSET.com, we have a list of all the businesses that have told us whether they will require masks or not. You can find that on our homepage at KSET.com. While temperatures are finally back closer to normal, many families are still struggling to recover from last month's winter storms. The San Antonio Independent School District wants to help, so the SAISD Foundation is holding another fill the bus drive today to collect food, water, and other necessities. The donations will benefit families within the district. The fill the bus drive happening from 11 to 1 at the SAISD administrative offices on Lavaca Street. Some of the items needed include canned goods, water, baby formula, powdered milk, baby food, and diapers. The foundation also hoping to raise $100,000 that will go directly to families in need. In your morning headlines, a disturbing video of an attack on an older Asian man in San Francisco and a SpaceX rocket explodes. Porch pirates are getting younger and turkeys are getting bolder. I think we're talking separate. The porch turkeys are tur pirates are not the turkeys, right? Might be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll find out. Okay, that's coming up. David Sears, good morning. Did you hear what she said about the SpaceX rocket? Yeah. As yeah. you fill out your application, pay yeah. attention. I'm aware of the right. hazards involved. There's a story coming up. You yeah. might go, hmm, maybe hmm. not. We'll start with some disturbing video, though. Out in San Francisco, three guys just walk into this laundromat in Chinatown and start beating up the 67-year-old Asian man. Video released a few days after new safety measures were in place to help prevent these kinds of attacks. This one happened at 10 at night. The man was just sitting in there when the three walked in and went right after him. The whole thing lasted about 45 seconds. The three not only beat him up, but got away with a couple of hundred dollars. Other business owners are around pretty disturbed. It's so hard to watch, though. An old man being, like, upside down like that. I know. Like, so helpless. And if anything, we've increased our efforts in patrols and in uh, the ability to respond to the community's needs. Now, the police union in San Francisco is offering a $2,500 reward for information leading to an arrest of these three. While coronavirus numbers are dropping across the country, jobless claims are rising. Last week's numbers reached 745,000. That's up 9,000 from the previous week. Those numbers went up 18,000 here in Texas, but 
That's a direct result of the major winter event we had here in Texas a couple of weeks ago. All right, Mark, pay attention. You are watching the launch of the SpaceX Mars rocket prototype. The SN10 started off looking good as it was going up. The rocket went up six miles. It flew above the Texas coast for a short flight, then started coming back down. And we'll show you the, the video of it uh, descending back towards that little launch pad. You can see the flames coming up the side of that rocket from underneath. Yeah, it lands fine. But then in just a few minutes, boom, an explosion. Oh. Now they're trying to figure out why. The flight was actually supposed to happen earlier, but they aborted that mission just a tenth of a second before blastoff. SpaceX is hoping to use the Starship to take customers between cities and eventually to Mars. Got to work on that landing. We have gone from porch pirate adults to junior high porch pirates, like this young lady who is seen stealing stuff right off the front porch. That was a camera from one of those ring doorbells. They kind of blacked out her face and she's so young. This thief operating in the Foxborough neighborhood of Steel Creek in Charlotte, North Carolina. The little girl has no fear. She even waves before she takes off down the street, but neighbors are not amused. She took this man's jacket and some other belongings. There have been other victims as well. One woman's medication was taken and the package found empty in the woods. Things are bad enough as it is, but to have somebody to just go up to your door, take your packages and just run and get in the car. I mean, it's just it's just it's crazy. Another victim said he hopes that the police catch her and then there can be a conversation with the police, her and her parents about stealing before it becomes a bigger issue. And finally this morning, that is a turkey standing on broken glass inside a dentist office. Something obviously ruffled the feathers of the turkey. Apparently the turkey <laughs> broke the window and then came on in. A turkey expert thinks probably saw his reflection, thought it was another male and attack since <gasps> it is mating season and dominance is a key to getting a mate. Or maybe he just wanted to check up and didn't want to wait in line. <laughs> That's a way in. in. <laughs> we need to get the molars looked at. Um, the the wisdom the spice our video of said problem down in Boca Chica with the SpaceX rocket mm -hmm. landing. You're I, still... I have officially completed my pre-registration. Yeah. All right. You got <laughs> guts, man. I'm telling you. Thank Picture you. Picture and everything. We'll see if I do have the right stuff or not. <laughs> we'll be there for the launch. <laughs> 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 He's going to go. <laughs> we all will. Thank you, David. 910 right now, 57 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. So it's been one year since a San Antonio couple got stranded on a cruise as the pandemic began. How Don and Natty are doing now and what they have planned for their next vacation. The day after Governor Abbott announced plans to fully reopen businesses and eat this in the state's mass mandate, small business owners across Texas find themselves struggling with what to decide to do next. Alana DeRocher with the Texas Tribune will join us later to talk about that. Celebrating Women's History Month through menstrual hygiene. After the break, how a local coffee trailer on the city's south side is giving a discount for anyone who helps raise awareness on period poverty. And taking a look at stocks, the Dow Dow, about 64 points right now. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 914. Helping women in need and ending the stigma surrounding periods. In honor of Women's History Month, a local business is hosting a drive for feminine products and offering a generous discount for customers who make a donation. The drive's already received a lot of attention on social media. Alicia Barrera joins us live from Southbound Coffee on the South Side with more on how you can help. Alicia? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, Southbound Coffee is usually known, they are known for their drinks like the Mexican mocha and the dirty horchata, and that's why they have a big line. But this week, the attention is all about this little pink box that they have right out here. It's filled with products that were donated and will benefit the local chapter of the nonprofit Periods United. Two days ago, Adriana Ruiz, owner and barista of the tiny pink trailer Southbound Coffee, took a break from making lattes to post on her business Instagram account. We decided to bring out a donation box. So for anybody who wants to donate, they can come to our location and we will be giving out a 20% discount uh, throughout the month of March. It's all about women and even men empowering women experiencing period poverty. Period poverty is just, you know, lack of access to feminine hygiene products. I mean, there's 
attacks on feminine hygiene products. The post has been liked more than a thousand times and shared more times than she can count. Ruiz hopes to create an open space for women and put an end to the stigma surrounding periods. It's something that's completely natural and all women go through. So I don't understand why we couldn't just, you know, talk about it as, you know, like over coffee or talking about coffee or, you know, sharing posts about it through social media. The donations will benefit Periods SATX, which was founded back in 2019 as a local chapter of the national nonprofit Periods United. And during the pandemic, the organization has been delivering feminine products directly to women in need. The co-founder says the demand for liners, tampons and pads is only increasing by the day. Being able to give these products to people, is, it's an overwhelming feeling. And it is sad that it exists, but, you know, we're hoping that, you know, we'll always be there for people when they need it. The goal is to fill the box, but also encourage more women owned businesses in San Antonio to do the same. I kind of challenge them to come together as well and, you know, join the mission, even if it's just for the month, um, just to try to, you know, support one another and let the community know that, hey, we support each other and we support you as well. Southbound Coffee is located on the corner lot on Carl. That's right off of Highway 90. The exact address is 103 Carl Avenue. And you have all month long to come visit this little pink box and pink trailer to make your donation. Again, they're accepting tampons, liners, pads, and then you get a discount while you're at it. Mark, Steph, back to you. Very good, Alicia. Happening all month long. Thank you. Okay, so to confirm, uh, and you can do this too, go to dearmoon.earth to sign up to be one of the volunteers to fly. I just got the email. Yay! Um, my Japanese isn't great, but arigato. Uh, thank you for <laughs> completing your pre-registration. Uh, I am now official crew candidate, um, and I've been told I will be hearing more after March 15th, but it's not just Mark doing this, everybody's doing Yeah, I love the picture. Mark looking very handsome in a spacesuit. <laughs> I, I think I look like a dork. No. Yes, I do. You're a brave person. Uh, thank you. Anyway, uh, you, everybody, you guys can sign up. Katie Blake, I encourage you to do it, or, or your husband. You can send him into space if you want. Um, <laughs> Mark I, and Mark. Too. Mark, oh, there Mark you and go. Mark in space. Yeah. That's a sitcom nobody's picking up. I was going to say. <laughs> That's but an idea. The deadline is March 14th. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It is, you did that fast, too, so it's not going to take people a ton of time. Oh, quick, it's, re it's really quick easy response. to do. Quick mm -hmm. response. Yeah. Nice. I like it. Keep Thanks. us posted. Okay. Uh, it's going to end up being another really nice day today. Uh, we'll have plenty of sunshine. There are some high thin clouds out there, but plenty of sunshine getting through, and that means we'll warm up again back in the 70s today. Warm and breezy south-southeast winds 10 to 15 miles per hour by late tonight. And by early tomorrow morning, the clouds will be back, but we're actually looking at an even warmer day coming up tomorrow. So temperatures now in the 50s for a lot of us starting to climb into the low 60s. But again, we're going to warm up very quickly here. Our dew points are pretty good, 40s and 50s. So that's feeling pleasant, even dry. But compared to this time yesterday, our dew points are up a bit, anywhere from about 5 to 15 miles. Uh, degrees, excuse me, not miles per hour, uh, up 13 degrees here in San Antonio. So that did lead to some slightly higher humidity this morning. We did have some patchy fog, but at this hour, all the fog is gone. So visibility is just fine all across the area. Uh, and again, we're just going to continue to see plenty of sunshine as we head into this afternoon. Satellite and radar showing some mid and high level clouds moving in from the west. Those will be with us today, but they're thin enough that still plenty of sunshine getting on through. Now, if you look off to the north and to the west, really without me even putting the upper level winds on here. You can kind of see our next disturbance producing some precipitation, some rain up in the panhandle and some snow in the higher elevations of Colorado into Utah as well. This is a nice little upper level disturbance spinning counterclockwise there an upper level low that's going to drop down into Texas tomorrow. Uh, what this will do as it moves into the Lone Star State is drop a cold front at the surface. That's going to move through for us fairly early in the day tomorrow. Clear out the clouds that will be around early tomorrow morning. Plenty of sunshine into your Friday afternoon. It'll be warm and less humid Friday afternoon as well. But this front will pull in some cooler air and you'll feel that as we head into the weekend. Uh, but the weekend itself is looking pretty nice. So we'll zoom in a little bit closer here. Uh, kind of take this 
this hour by hour heading into this afternoon. Plenty of sunshine, mostly sunny skies and temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. By tomorrow morning, we're back with the clouds. I can't rule out a little bit of patchy fog, mainly along and east of 35. But you'll notice by 7 a.m. areas west of 35 starting to clear out behind this frontal boundary that will sweep through mid morning here in San Antonio. Look by lunchtime tomorrow. We have plenty of sunshine and some drier air will filter in by behind this tomorrow afternoon. So we'll see our temperatures jump to near 80 tomorrow afternoon with some low humidity. <laughs> That's actually going to feel very nice. It will be a little bit gusty at times tomorrow uh, behind this front. As it moves through, we could see some wind gusts up closer to 30 miles per hour at times, especially during the second half of the day on Friday. But look at that 79 tomorrow, but you'll notice by the weekend it will be a little bit cooler temperatures dropping into the 60s uh, with some additional cloud cover. And as we head into next week, humidity will build back in and uh, we'll be looking at plenty of cloud cover through the middle parts of next week. So enjoy the sun today and tomorrow, guys. We sure will. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, a San Antonio couple began the pandemic stuck on a cruise ship. A year later, they've spent most of their time at home. We check in with Don and Natty on their upcoming vacation plans after the break. Welcome back. Just about 925, a San Antonio couple got stuck at sea just as the coronavirus pandemic began. You may remember Don and his wife, Natty, from our reporting last year. They were rescued from the Diamond Princess cruise ship and flown to JBSA Lackland, where they had to quarantine. Well, this year marks one year since they were finally allowed to return home. One of KSAT's newer reporters, Jonathan Cotto, caught up with them to see how they're coping with a new normal as they prepare to go on another cruise. It just is irritating to see this. <laughs> you breathe through your nose and your mouth. It's hard to confront those people because you know what's going to happen. Don and his wife, Natty, have a unique perspective on the pandemic. The San Antonio couple was on a cruise ship off the coast of Japan when the coronavirus was discovered on board early last year. <laughs> Just moments after this dance on the Diamond Princess, Don says thousands of passengers were instructed to go back to their cabins. We had, I believe it's 732 people taken from the ship that we were quarantined on. That included a woman from Australia the couple had dinner with and a Florida man they befriended. And uh, he was on the ventilator for three weeks and almost passed away. The San Antonio couple says they stay in touch with friends they met on that cruise and do what they can to stay COVID free. It's why Don has some frustration when he sees people without a mask. I just want to walk up to him sometime and I want to show him some of the pictures. Of, I'd like to explain to him, you know, I was there. I saw a lot of people being yeah. evacuated. So this is a serious uh, disease. Don and Natty had to spend days in their cabins before making it on a plane with crews wearing plastic suits. When they landed in San Antonio, they, along with the rest of the passengers, were guided down the stairs where they had to quarantine at JBSA Lackland. Eventually, they were allowed to return to their home and have rarely left except for a walk outside or a trip to the grocery store. It's not a normal life, like not like it used to be. The rollout of vaccines is helping. Natty is waiting to become eligible for her vaccination, but Don has one dose with a second and already scheduled. I will feel more comfortable, but uh, still will take precautions like wearing a mask. They hope to be both fully vaccinated before the next cruise in May. We've had four canceled already. Don and Natty say they are ready to travel, but are well aware it won't look like the trips they've taken in the past. You can't completely eliminate everything from your life. We can deal with it. We just have to take a few extra precautions. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Hard to believe it's been a year. I know, right? Mm. Flew by, it really did in a lot of ways. And for others, it did not. 927, 58 degrees. And coming up on GMSA at 9, for the past several years, there's been a battle brewing over how the Alamo's history is told. It's the topic of this week's episode of KSET Explains. Our Myra Arthur and RJ Marcus tells us what we can expect. The internet is in a frenzy over shirtless pics of people getting the COVID-19 vaccine. Why many are now asking for a monthly calendar, calendar of these so-called hunky vaxxers. Okay, Steph could have read that one, seriously. <laughs> it's Why? All, all you. <laughs> and how businesses are weighing in after Governor Greg Abbott announced an end to the mask mandate. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune will join us with more from businesses and the politics behind the governor's See, decision. And I could have read that one. See, uh, all right. You 
A day after Governor Greg Abbott announced plans to fully reopen businesses and in the state's mass mandate, small business owners across Texas found themselves struggling trying to decide what to do next. Governor Abbott's announcement Tuesday also capped a nearly year-long stretch of the most intraparty dissent he has seen in his time as governor. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune joins us now to discuss the politics behind his decision and how businesses are weighing in. Good morning, Alana. Good morning. It's now up to Texas businesses to decide whether to require face masks after the governor loosened restrictions Tuesday. However, many tell you and the folks at the Trib it's not an easy decision. What are they weighing? Yeah, uh, some said that they feel like they're in the firing line. Uh, that you know, before uh, or up until uh, next Wednesday when this order uh, takes effect, that they've had the government's back. You know, I mean, they know some customers don't like wearing masks, and those discussions have been difficult. But the fact that the state has mandated uh, that they be worn has helped their case. And so uh, they, you know, worry about those confrontations. They worry about confusion that it'll lead to. That we know several lists are already uh, circulating in different communities about a list of businesses that will still require masks and social distancing and limiting capacity and those that won't. Uh, those that will, so they've, they've faced, you know, promises of boycotts of their businesses. And then also, I mean, just kind of obviously they're considering their bottom line and the um, economic benefit of reopening is questionable given that the virus is still very present and could lead to, to future shutdowns, uh, whether they could be government mandated again or just, uh, you know, to keep everybody safe. On the subject at the end of the mask mandate in Texas, was this purely a way for the governor to answer his pandemic era Republican critics? It's definitely his starkest response uh, to that criticism uh, thus far. Uh, of course, some have said that it came too little too late, given the number of businesses we've seen close in response to, uh, you know, the different shutdowns and different moves that the governor's made to try to contain this virus while balancing, uh, you know, the economy over the past year. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely um, uh, speculation, especially given the story we saw yesterday uh, that the Tribune reported as far as, you know, the fact that three of his four uh, medical advisors said they weren't directly consulted by the governor ahead of making this decision. All right, let's talk about the dropping of the mask mandate and put things in perspective with the winter storms of last month. Some might say this was just a convenient change of subject for an executive under scrutiny for those statewide blackouts just last month. Yeah, uh, we saw the governor, you know, stumbling, quite frankly, uh, last month in response to that kind of finger pointing at, at people that he himself appointed to oversee and operate uh, the grid. And so, yeah, it's definitely been uh, seen as maybe a distraction, but short-lived. We published some 20 stories yesterday alone across several subject matters, half a dozen of which were related to the fallout from uh, last month's uh, power grid failure. All right, Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks, Alana. Thank you. Outside with live cam, another cool start, but we are definitely uh, warming up. Last couple of days around this time, Katie, we've been around 50, 52 degrees. Mm -hmm. Where are we at uh, this morning as far as lows? We, 45. <laughs> I'm going to double check myself. <laughs> We're starting off with our low temperature. So 45 was our morning low. We had slightly higher humidity in place today. That led to patchy fog in some areas. Any fog from early in the morning has cleared on up and we'll have some high thin clouds around today, but still plenty of sunshine for your Thursday. So morning lows across the area generally in the 40s, low 40s across a portion of the hill country. There 47 the morning low in Beeville, 50 the morning low in Catula. Already starting to warm up here very nicely, approaching the upper 50s across a good portion of Bear County. And as you saw there, we've got some of those high thin clouds, but they still allow for plenty of sunshine to get on through and that's going to help to warm us up this afternoon after school temperatures climbing into the mid to upper 70s winds will become breezy by this afternoon as well out of the south southeast 10 to 15 miles per hour going to be another breezy day tomorrow as well but we'll see a change in our wind direction thanks to a cold front more on that coming up in just a bit but first if you missed it earlier a look at today's pollen count mold is moderate mountain cedar and elm are low we'll take a look at your weekend forecast coming up in just a bit mark and steph not too bad, Katie. Thank you. Taking a look out at Transguide, uh, I-35 and Laredo, I-10 and 35 traffic running smoothly right now. Well, it is one of the most well-known historic sites in these United States, and it's located in the heart of downtown San Antonio. This week's episode of KSET Explains is all about the Alamo. Our Myra Arthur and RJ Marcus break down this new episode for us. 
when it comes to the Alamo, there is certainly some explaining to do. If you've been following the saga over the last several years at this point on the plans to redesign Alamo Plaza and what the full history should look like, you might be confused. And there's a lot of different players, a lot of different factors and twists and turns. So in this episode, that's what we're looking at is where those plans stand now. Who are the significant parties, if you will, who have a really big stake in this? And where do we go from here? We're also looking at the history of the mm -hmm. Alamo and how that's uh, been interesting over the years. Yeah, Myra, to say the least. And when it comes to history in San Antonio, we know that there's a lot of complexity. There's a lot of layers. And especially when it comes to the Alamo, a lot of different factions. And that's something that I think we wanted to explore in this episode, being able to kind of show each different angle and each different side of this history and make sure that everyone's voice is being told and being heard when it comes to the Alamo because it again is very layered and being able to kind of peel it and kind of figure it all out was really a, a focus of this episode. And I think a question a lot of people might have is why does the Alamo and the Alamo Plaza need a redesign? And we're answering some of those questions from the very people who believe that this plan should move forward and taking you through the back and forth between the local level and the state level and all the different angles of how this plan has evolved since it began, since the wheels began turning in 2015. You've probably heard about the Cenotaph, mm -hmm. and you know that that's been a huge sticking point, but why? So we're explaining that. And also, just in the last couple of days, there have been twists and turns in the drama surrounding the redesigned plan, if you will. So we're catching you up to speed on where that stands now. Yeah, and we're also taking a look at some of the myths associated with yes. the Alamo. Of course, there's a lot of history to come from that. Legends that are larger than the state of Texas themselves. So we're going to kind of break down some of those myths and kind of try and figure out maybe how the how some of those myths came to came to pass and really sort of uh, take a deeper dive into the history and especially sort of the volatile factions at the time when the Battle of the Alamo took place. Because no matter where you stand on the issue of redesign and how the story is told, the Alamo is certainly something that's important to everybody in San Antonio, right. significant to all of us, and the entire state of Texas. So check out this episode, KSAT Explains. It's a new episode out right now. Go to KSAT.com slash explains, or you can watch it on the KSAT TV app. Thanks, you guys. 939, 60 degrees. So they're being called the hunky vaxxers. Public figures all around the world are going viral for taking off their shirts to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. Seeing as Jeannie Mose has some of the best social media reactions. That's coming up next. Yeah, we're having fun with this one. As public figures get publicly vaccinated, some are doing more than rolling up their sleeves. That's right. A few are showing some skin, and the result has the internet talking and staring. Seeing as Jeannie Mose reports on hunky vaxxers. I'm not staring. She's staring. <laughs> Most American public figures have been demurely rolling up their sleeves, modestly exposing arms, even as Arnold joked. Put that needle down. But elsewhere, shirts were going down. For instance, this South African doctor went viral thanks to his impressive physique. Meet the hunky vaxxers. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson was welcomed into their ranks. Who are getting the, the first dose? And I didn't know that one possible side effect of the shot was of uh, the gun show. That's just what's left over. Uh, from 40 years and 40 pounds ago when I used to be in shape. But Neil showed barely any skin compared to the French health minister. Someone joked he was promoting vaccine uptake as part of Operation Smolder. Good PR for the launch of his new fragrance. Vaccine, the only thing contagious now is passion. Then there was the Croatian finance minister whose photo op in a skin tight t-shirt earned him leering eyeball emojis. And this photo attracted eyeballs as a reporter suggested we need to talk about the Greek prime minister's vaccine pose. Very Putin on horseback, commented someone. Not sure if they're needling Putin or the Greek prime minister. There was plenty of fanning and adjusting glasses for a better look. This British member of parliament dispensed with his entire shirt. 
At least when Dolly Parton got her shot. I didn't hurt. Just she dressed for the occasion. With this peekaboo top. Dolly just wasn't cut out to roll up sleeves as she crooned new lyrics to her song, Jolene. Vaccine, vaccine, cause once you're dead, then that's a bit too late. <laughs> but it's not too late for this idea. Okay, we are going to need a vaccine calendar. Injecting a little beefcake while hoping COVID's days are numbered. Ginny Mos, CNN. Vaccine, vaccine. New York. Wow. Dolly. <laughs> Hunky mm -hmm. vaxxers. Yeah. What guys? Right, Katie? We didn't see any guys. No. What? We didn't, no, no. No, man. not at all. No shirtless no. men. Mm. Mm. Nope. We're. Mm -mm. So isn't awkward at all, is it? <laughs> Well, you know, anybody that gets vaccinated is good in my book. There you go. Love it. <laughs> well played. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Newly married. <laughs> yes. There you go. There you go. Um, segue into weather. 55 <laughs> at the airport now, 60 in Pleasanton. So still on the cool side, but we're in for another good warm up today. We had some spots in the low 80s, especially south and west yesterday. I do think that's a good possibility. Again, today we'll go 81 Catula, near 80 in Del Rio, low to mid 70s in the Hill Country, but most of us should uh, climb into the 70s this afternoon with plenty of sunshine. It'll be actually even warmer tomorrow afternoon, near 80 Friday, behind a front that will come through tomorrow morning. This is a Pacific cold front coming through tomorrow. So really no rain here. It'll bring in some drier air and that's what's going to help our temperatures tomorrow afternoon to shoot into the upper 70s near 80. But as we get into the weekend, some cooler air starting to trickle in and that'll put our morning lows back in the upper 40s Saturday and Sunday and high temperatures only in the 60s. So a couple more warm days. But as we look ahead to the weekend, things will start to trend a little bit cooler. Satellite and radar fairly quiet. No rain out there. We do have some high thin clouds moving in from the west and those will hang around today. But as I've been mentioning, those allow for plenty of sunshine to get on through. So today will end up being a pretty bright, sunny day overall, even with some high clouds in the sky. Uh, we do have a swirl here over a portion of Utah, Colorado, really the four corners there. This is our next upper level low that's going to drop down into Texas tonight and tomorrow. This is going to kind of clip us to the north and to the east. So unfortunately, we won't get any good rain making energy out of this disturbance, but it is going to send that Pacific cold front our direction and it will arrive tomorrow morning. So through 7 a.m. tomorrow, low clouds building back in across a lot of the area. If you're west of 35 as this front moves through, that'll keep those low clouds from building in. So mostly sunny west of I 35 tomorrow morning. I do think here in San Antonio we will start off tomorrow with a couple hours of some low morning clouds. But as soon as this front comes through, it is going to sweep all that cloud cover and slightly higher humidity away, setting us up for a warm and breezy Friday afternoon and again tomorrow. That's when we'll see our temperatures jump to near 80 degrees because of this nice little drop in humidity. Humidity will stay low through the weekend. By early next week, dew point numbers will start to climb back into the upper 50s near 60. So we'll bring the humidity back in in a bigger way, but not until after. The weekend will be slightly cooler this weekend, though. So your Thursday with mostly sunny skies, some high thin clouds out there, but still plenty of sun. We'll see temperatures jump into the mid 70s, a little bit breezy at times today. And also again tomorrow behind that frontal boundary. So breezy and warm as we wrap up the work and school week. A bit cooler this weekend, 63 Saturday, 66 on Sunday, mostly cloudy skies. And we'll keep a good amount of cloud cover around all the way through the middle of next week. So enjoy the sunshine today and tomorrow. Mark and Steph. Good advice. We'll Thank enjoy the sunshine. Thank you, Katie Blake. Right now, 948, 60 degrees. We'll be right back. Genealogy company My Heritage has debuted a new online tool that is the talk of the twisted tech town. The technology called Deep Nostalgia uses artificial intelligence to animate faces in old photographs, bringing them to bizarre life. The company used old family photographs to show off the tech, along with some famous ones like those of Oscar Wilde and Albert Einstein. I mean, come on, <laughs> who couldn't use a little more of silly Einstein, am I right? In addition to animation, the site can also colorize and enhance old photos to make them shine. The digital simulations can feel both familiar and downright eerie. It's similar to technology used to make deep fakes, fake videos of real people, which has raised concerns about the spread of disinformation. 
Controversy aside, technology can do some truly amazing things. Like how about reading a more than 300 year old sealed letter without actually opening it up? Before envelopes, people locked letters using intricate ways of folding the paper. A research team found a way to read one of these letters without breaking its seal. Experts didn't want to damage the fragile letters which were found in an old trunk in the Netherlands, so they used a highly sensitive x-ray scanner and sophisticated computer algorithms to unlock, unfold, and understand the parchment virtually. Researchers found the letter, dated July of 1697, was a request for a certified copy of a death notice. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Coming up today at noon, several baby food brands and manufacturers facing a lawsuit after claims of containing high levels of arsenic. Which brands you'll need to look out for today at noon. And tomorrow on GMSA at 9, as energy companies braced for last month's winter blast, many of them had in-house meteorologists describing how bad it would get. But a defender's investigation found that CPS Energy used a college student instead. Dylan Collier will join us to debrief this story tomorrow at 9. Last game for the Spurs before the All-Star break. They are honoring some hometown heroes tonight. A thousand frontline workers, medical workers, teachers, frontline service workers will get a ticket. They will get a hot dog. They will get a t-shirt and a drink. And hopefully get to see and the Spurs see beat Spurs the Thunder. Win. Yes. Spurs could be six games above 500 tonight if they win for the first time this season. So that's good. And they're in sixth place in the West. So they need to win and then they get some rest. Yay. Get the all-star break. Go Spurs go. Thank yep. you, David. Go Spurs go. Hey, folks, San Antonians will be able. Are we doing a real quick weather? We're we just doing this. Um, just just this. Okay. okay. All right. So San Antonians will be able to help design a monopoly board featuring iconic San Antonio landmarks. So, yeah, uh, until March 17th, fans can share locations they would like to see featured on the board by the official Monopoly San Antonio email, which is sanantonio at toptrumps.com. Yeah, toptrumps.com. Locally themed squares will replace Boardwalk and Park Place. From the original Atlantic City Monopoly board, including customized community chess, chance playing cards, playing the, making the entire game a customizable San Antonio experience. So that bring, we bring our whole family here back together, yes. including David and Katie here. What pieces or property would you guys like to see on a Monopoly board featuring the Alamo City? Go ahead. I think you have to have the North Star boots. I almost I, think those would be a good, like, That's funny. That's piece? what I was yeah, thinking. Yeah. Yes. That'd be I, awesome. Yes, I would like to see the boots. Of course, the Alamo. You know, we're going to see the Alamo. See, and I was only thinking, like, uh, Alamo, maybe Tower of the Americas for Boardwalk Park, Park Place, but... You were all over game pieces early on uh, in our discussion this uh -huh. morning. We like that one. Yes. What was yours? The boots. The boots. The boots. We like the boots. The Spurs. I was, I was thinking you put all five trophies together as yeah. one one game piece for the Spurs. Okay, Spurs. For the San Spurs. Uh -huh. Spurs we, we discussed the Alamo, whether or not we should have the Alamo, or the Alamo could be all the hotels. Right. Uh, exactly. So, well. so that's pretty cool. And we talked about we talked about a, a margarita. A margarita is a game piece. It's a game a, piece. A puffy, a puffy taco, a puffy is, a taco yeah. is a game piece. A chicken on a stick. Or chick yeah. Well, there you go. Fiesta, there you go. Right? Now, yeah. you, and you got a lot of board pieces. I don't know what you're oh, doing yeah. with all those. I mean, yeah. tons. The military bases, the theme parks, yeah. I mean, all sorts of stuff. We can River fill walk. it out well. Yes, yeah. we can. What and of course, the Bear County problems. Jail for all those bad people. Who it's uh, San, San Antonio, Antonio at toptrumps.com. Toptrumps.com. Got it. Go. We're waiting for your answers. Have a great day, guys.